Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's session, NOLA Interns Investing in Our Next Generation. My name is Ken Weatherup, Vice President of Human Capital and Culture at the New Orleans Business Alliance. For the last 10 years, I've had the awesome job and great honor of recruiting New Orleans area students to participate in the Business Alliance's internship program. Internships are fantastic learning experiences. They're a dynamic opportunity for real world practical application of classroom knowledge. At the Business Alliance, our student interns are able to learn about our organizational culture, learn new skills and strengthen their existing ones, gain some industry insights, and test the waters of different professional pathways while engaging in meaningful, practical work. Today's conversation will focus on the positive impact of internships, the impact on students, on their future studies and career aspirations, on the, their universities and communities, and on the businesses and organizations that create thoughtful, rewarding intern engagements. Internships present an amazing opportunity for organizations like ours to make a long lasting investment in the generation of young people who will shape the future of New Orleans and the world. Joining us today are Dr. Michelle Thompson, Associate Professor at the University of New Orleans, Department of Planning and Urban Studies. Next, we have my colleague, Chandra Tettleton, Orleans Business Alliance, and Candace Wilhelmer, University of New Orleans student who is about to graduate as a Bachelor of Science in Urban Studies and Planning, and happens to be currently one of the Business Alliance's amazing interns. Welcome everyone. To get the conversation rolling, let's take a moment for some introductions. Dr. Thompson, please tell us about your role at UNO, and in particular, about the importance of internships as part of the experiential learning process. Thanks, Ken. Again, I'm Dr. Michelle Thompson, and I've been an associate professor in the Department of Planning and Urban Studies at, the, at UNO since about 2008. And since that time, one of my passions had been to work with students and go into the field to collect data and provide maps in the recovery of New Orleans. And then that soon turned into the opportunity to talk about economic development and investment. So while my passion for teaching mapping and doing community engagement is not necessarily the standard in the planning department, since many are theoretical, I've really worked on the applied work and wanted to make sure that students not only had the ability to engage with public, private, and nonprofit organizations, but also to be able to have the um, hands-on work experience through the internships. Fantastic. We're very glad that you're able to be part of this discussion today. Next, we're going to go to Chandra Tettleton. Uh, please tell everyone a bit about yourself and your work at the Business Alliance. Good afternoon, everyone. My name, as Ken stated, is Chandra Tettleton. I am the Director of Project Management at New Orleans Business Alliance. And my background, outside of being a proud person from Atlanta, Georgia, um, is that I attended Xavier University and experienced a wealth of internship and support while there in undergrad and continued my education for grad school in political science and urban studies and really saw the impact of internships, even a WHO data internship with Dr. Thompson in 2012, which kind of helped solidify who and what I wanted to be and do um, outside of my graduate career. So I was very excited to hear that we are having interns at NOLA VA and how to support that. Wonderful. And since you've been working closely with our next guest, your insights are especially important today. Now we welcome Candace Wilhelmer. Candace, please share a bit about yourself and your current studies at UNO. Hi, everyone. My name is Candace Wilhelmer. I'm from New Orleans. I'm an undergraduate student at the University of New Orleans. I'm majoring in urban, plannings, urban planning and studies, and I'll be graduating this spring. I've been working with NOLA VA as a virtual intern while abroad on a project of identifying the impact of COVID-19 on New Orleans small businesses, specifically Black-owned businesses. Wonderful. I appreciate all of you being part of our conversation today. Dr. Thompson, I'm going to come back to you now. You've touched on the importance of experiential learning through internships. For you, how do intern opportunities translate into practical benefits for students as they begin their professional lives? 
I think that one of the most important feature about the internships is the interaction with professionals in the community where they can learn the soft skills, the hard skills, be able to engage on projects that are really meaningful and timely. And also, it's not just about a resume builder. It's about making sure that, that the work that's being done, it builds upon their skill set. It gives them more confidence. And it really allows them to be able to talk to their future employer about the critical work that they've done in helping to reshape or enhance the city. So with that in mind, what do you encourage your students to look for in a great internship opportunity? Well, the first thing is definitely having making sure that there is a match and the match really comes with a student having a self assessment of what skills do I bring to the table or which ones do I want to get the all of the even though I focus on mapping, which is my passion, there have been internships with the city council in understanding public policy. How do you navigate city hall there's been internships in the community where folks are literally going in and helping to rehab houses and then there's a lot in between so i think it depends upon what the student is looking for what the organization can provide and together that's where they can meet in the middle and both are able to get what they need excellent now i know research is a key part of your work and your teaching how do you engage your students through their internships in research that is relevant to both their core studies and the challenges that New Orleans faces? Oh, absolutely. One of the most exciting opportunities that I've had in the past few years is really working with your, um, your CEO, Norman Barnum, on qualified opportunity zones. I didn't know anything about them. So for research, it have, it, the students had to learn what I are they, where are they, how can that impact the opportunity for investment? So the research and the questions around the what, where, and why, and how this information can be helpful for future businesses is something that we worked on together and shared back to the community. Excellent. It's so encouraging for, well, I've been here for 30 years in New Orleans. It's encouraging to see these kind of research finding, findings utilized to affect positive change in the community. Uh, I know you had another story you wanted to share about the practical application of your students' uh, internship research in New Orleans. Yes, thanks, Ken. So one of the projects that I was working with an at the time undergraduate student with Graham Hayes, he lived in the Black Pearl or Uptown neighborhood of New Orleans. And in terms of the internship, you know, Graham was inter interested in doing GIS and he's now working at Entergy doing GIS mapping. So I wanted to add that in, in terms of the work that he did also help him lead into a job. And in the next slide, we're able to see the project that really started out with public participation geographic information systems. And in the map on the next slide, you'll be able to see where Graham was able to collect information on the lights. Awesome. Um, thank you, Dr. Thompson. Next up, I'm turning the program over to my colleague, Chandra Tettleton, who's going to share her insights on what students can expect as New Orleans Business Alliance interns. Chandra, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ken. I've had the opportunity to work with around five or six interns while being here with NLDA for roughly two years. So that's been a great amount of support that the organization shows for local universities and also undergrad and graduate students. And like Dr. Thompson spoke about, the real world experience that they receive pre and current and then post COVID has looked different, but has shaped all of their experiences in various ways. I've also had the opportunity, maybe not by coincidence, wink, wink, or by fate to work with mostly female and BIPOC interns and seeing their experiences navigating not only the university and them sharing that information with me and me being able to share my experiences with them at a, a historically black university and at a university um, that's open to public students in all variety has been a really great sharing experience and even bonding with Candace over doing an internship in at UNO in Austria <laughs> and studying 
and talking about the weather. Those experiences of real world aren't just experiences that they have from disseminating information from the classroom to the actual data, but the personal exchange and life experiences that you have. And each project is different, but really the camaraderie, the conversations, the ability to expand beyond the work. And as a, I feel like a forever student, <laughs> having to look at your coursework and put the um, application to real world in any capacity is a great advantage for these individuals to not only know what it's like to be in the workforce, but to know what they want to be and see and be a catapult to change in the workforce. Fantastic. Can you touch on some of the specific projects that our interns have uh, contributed to? When I started, I had the experience of basically being a mentee of an intern who was here similar to Candace for a full year. Kyla was a senior at Tulane University, a drum major, an all around amazing person and had experience in bio health and sciences and participating in the NOLA Health um, Challenge. And she helped me support and manage that program. And we really worked together to go from this hybrid or this model to fully um, remote and really looked at health equity challenges. I also had an intern that worked on co-packing and manufacturing with a co-project with GNO Inc. where there was an assessment and she was in grad school and actually working remotely, but lived and was from New Orleans and COVID brought her home. And so we were able to really work and assess the amounts of co-packing similar to the bicycle example of the lights turned on that there was a limited amount of resources finite and then there's this now or study and a feasibility study to support expanding cold storage in New Orleans and neighboring parishes through GNO Inc that they got through USDA. So even though that work was two years ago it's still being stamped and pushing through and the, can the work that Candace is doing is multi-year as well with working with the Resilient Corridors and another intern is coming on this summer to help support that work. And is really looking at the disproportionate effect of black businesses from hurricanes to systemic racism and really seeing ways that we as a city and the Business Alliance can support their equitable shift. Wonderful. So I have to ask you from your perspective as someone who's both been an intern and has ma managed interns, what advice would you give students who are thinking about applying for an inter internship, especially one at the business lines? Sure, I'm not gonna steal Candace's thunder because I want everyone to listen to her words of wisdom, even though I got a sneak peek. So I just echo and double down on what she's gonna say, but also that with your internship, everything is different. And that every experience is an experience that you will support and help you grow that may, you may not support it in that moment, in that time. It may be something that you've never done before, including public speaking, wink, wink, Candace, or something that you always do, typing papers and reports that you feel like you do that for school. Why are you doing that for this project? But it really helps to shape you and motivate you as a real rounded person, not just for your internship and your grade, if it's paid or unpaid for the money, but for the workforce and general life. So just really take that in consideration when you do the quote unquote mundane tasks or the tasks that you've never done before in your life. Thank you, Chandra. And now we wanna to talk to one of our Business Alliance interns and have her share her experiences. Hello, Candace. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're from, how you chose this particular field, and how you wound up choosing to attend UNO. Sure. I'm originally from Southern California, but I've been living in New Orleans for many years. I'm currently finishing my degree abroad and this internship remotely in Austria. After attending high school in the Central Business District of New Orleans, I noticed so much gentrification in the city. This really sparked my interest in urban planning because I became curious of how cities work, how businesses work, and how neighborhoods work. I chose to study at the University of New Orleans because it offered many programs and opportunities to immerse myself in urban planning. The degree programs at UNO are also very flexible, and I was able to still have close connections within New Orleans while pursuing a degree in urban planning. Excellent. 
So how did you learn about internship opportunities at the Business Alliance? I actually learned through Dr. Thompson during my last year of studying and with the COVID pandemic going on, I really wanted to start an internship, but I wanted to do it abroad and still have a connection to New Orleans. So Dr. Thompson told me about a project that she's been working on to kind of figure out the impact of COVID-19 on black owned businesses in New Orleans. So she told me about New Orleans Business Alliance and I thought that was the perfect opportunity to do research during my last year of college. Well, I have to say your internship with us has been the first of its kind in a way in that you did all of your intern project work remotely and very remotely at that. Uh, studying abroad in Austria, what were some of the challenges you faced to actually do the internship? Studying abroad, I faced many time management challenges as well as working with time zone differences and staying on track. A remote internship can easily feel kind of overwhelming, especially with time zone differences, but I really benefited from it because I learned that I can do the work anywhere in the world. I was able to manage my time and stay on track. I'm also very familiar with New Orleans and the neighborhoods as well, so I have a lot of knowledge on this topic. So what were some of the projects that you worked on that you feel will help you in your career? I've been working with Nola BA as an intern on this project of identifying the impact of COVID-19 on um, New Orleans small businesses, specifically black owned businesses. I feel that this helps me in my career because I'm gaining remote work experience and project management experience, as well as working in the economic development industry and with cities. It really goes hand in hand with urban planning. Excellent. Are there any projects you worked on with us that gave you more insight into other opportunities that you may wanna pursue after graduation. Yeah, working on this project really gave me insight because I've learned about data analysis. I built confidence with speaking and being in work meetings and getting personal time management, communication and teamwork. I would like to pursue a career where I can analyze data and work possibly in the public sector, because I really like researching ways that help cities and neighborhoods. And I think we've got a, a couple slides of yours that we're gonna pull up. Um, and if you wouldn't mind talking about your work on the resilient corridors. So this has been the project that I've been working on with RCI, the Resilient Corridors in Initiative, and just some samples of the work. For example, like 78% of the small business owners who applied were black owned businesses. And the mission of the RCI is to address the economic downturn from business and job loss and hospitalities and service related industries. Another example is how large business, the largest business model type that applied for RCI is B2C, which is business to consumer. Small business owners have struggled the most to get relief through the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. The majority business needs for support were majority they needed financial support, marketing, and technology, because a lot of these businesses didn't have a lot of financial support. That's also what I've been researching is the wealth gap within New Orleans and the US. Excellent. Um, so with all your experience here at Business Alliance, what kind of advice would you give to students who are considering applying for an internship? I would tell anyone who's thinking about getting involved in an internship, whether it's paid or unpaid, to not be afraid to ask those around you for help and always check local resources. Also to not focus too much on the pay because in both instances, it's about the experience you gain. Thank you, Candace. Um, I know Chandra has expressed this too, but we truly appreciate the time and energy that you've committed to your internship with the New Orleans Business Alliance. Thank you.
And now I'd like to take the opportunity to open up our discussion, <clears throat> pardon me, open up our discussion to talk about the overall benefits of internships. And I have to say, from an employer's perspective, one of the immediate benefits that we see from working with interns is this amazing infusion of enthusiasm and fresh perspectives on all the challenges that we undertake. And Dr. Thompson, you touched on this earlier. Yes, internships can help students gain valuable work experience and really beef up their resume, but where do they start? Where, how do you engage with an employer about an internship opportunity? And this is for anybody in the group. So I'll start with that. I think that, um, you know, it, it seems very simplistic, but students really need to know their program and talk with their advisors early on. I worked as the um, undergrad coordinator for some time. And when I would say, you know, you have an opportunity to look around the city and reach out. There's what's great about the internet. You can find an email address and contact an organization for an informational interview and talk to them about what kind of projects there are and come up with a proposal. So it can be student generated. It also certainly talking to their um, university partners who might be related to these projects. It could be private sector, but primarily if they could just talk to their, uh, their professors and say, I want to learn about whatever that is, housing. I wanna learn about economic development. What's out there for me? And then just come up with that idea and because there's always a timing issue, if you want to do an internship in the fall, you got to start in the spring. So that's part of what needs to, what really needs to happen. Fantastic. Um, when we're looking at some of the, the sort of secondary benefits of internships beyond those that are directly linked to a student's course studies and the specific skills that they're learning, what are some of the things that, that some of you consider are sort of the, the best side benefits or outcomes just from the experience itself? Old intern um, and share my experience and hopefully Candace, you can chime in. So the lasting relationship that you have with the organization, with the uh, potential mentor or support agent has been really beneficial for me and not just the fringe benefits of an internship. Randomly, when I did an internship at Xavier, I got free festival tickets, <laughs> so that was great. So they couldn't pay me in uh, financial uh, compensation, but they paid me in love, support, and justice tickets. But really, <laughs> and camaraderie, because we all went together, and they were also my ride to go to <laughs> the jazz fest. But really, you really are benefiting from the experience, understanding what you may or may not want to do in life, working with that agency and really cultivating yourself as an adult and quote unquote adulting is not just going to class, going to school, finishing, but really seeing how your schedule aligns with your work, with your school schedule, how your financials can be supported through the work that you do or may not be as supported as you presume based on even the market. So that was really beneficial for me for all my internships. And I think that's very beneficial of an internship as a whole. And if I could just do a quick follow up and what Chandra said in terms of those relationships, there's one way of getting you know, your recommendation from your professor, but I think there's another, it's very different when you get that recommendation that you may need for a job or getting your master's, um, if that's the case, from someone who's worked very closely and can talk about time management, writing skill, responsiveness and things that really do matter to the employer. The projects are wonderful, but it's also, how are you as a colleague? And I think that those are things that you really can't get from I'm just sitting in a classroom and reading a book. I will say from my perspective, it's been amazing to have 10 years here at the Business Alliance to watch the career arcs of some of our our first interns, in fact, one of the very first interns that I had the responsibility for onboarding, uh, came back to us years later. In fact, she was a, a, a student of yours, I believe, Dr. Thompson, uh, who came back to us many years later as an assistant to vice president. And so to have that trajectory from uh, a young intern who then went off to get her graduate degree at Cornell, sounds familiar as well, Dr. Thompson, uh, and then to come back to us and, and to watch these trajectories over a long period is really is rewarding from from my side especially yeah and and I certainly want to hear from you Candace I know you're in the, the middle of it 
But what I've also found when you talk about being able to look at other opportunities, there's there's been some question about whether the, the University of New Orleans brand is, can it compete with the Ivy Leagues? Can it compete with other universities or I'll even say um, our local Tulane or Loyola? Yes, they can because they have the experience of going out and doing the work that is just the same as any other student. And also they are able to brand themselves because they're not, after a while, it's not about the university. It's about that student being able to take that experience and saying, this is now what I can contribute. And I've shown you that I can do it. So I think that will be helpful as well in changing from the mindset of student to professional. Anis, were there any insights you wanted to share on the side benefits of internships? Yeah, as everybody mentioned, I also agree that it helps build connections and networking. And it also kind of helps clarify a little bit where you want to go, like in the specific field with your internships. For example, I knew I wanted to go into urban planning, but I didn't know specifically what I wanted to do with urban planning. And by doing this internship, I now know I want to do something with data and anal anal analysis and possibly project management. Excellent. So I have a, a, a final question that I want to ask the group. Um, we're always looking at ways that we can make our internship program better. Um, what can organizations like the Business Alliance do to make um, the internships more accessible or more inclusive or just a better overall experience? Um, I, again, we're, we're lifelong learners and it, it helps me to hear new perspectives on how we can improve. Well, it just so happens that earlier today, I was talking to the city, the director of the city planning department here in New Orleans, and we were talking about ways in which students can get more involved. I think that, you know, they really, this is why we're doing this discussion. What is the NOLA VA? People hear about it. They know that it has something to do with money, but what can they learn about? What can they participate in? How, what's the connection to City Hall? I think that this is an opportunity to open folks' minds up to saying that there are, they say quasi, quasi public or quasi private, whichever you decide that this is, that you can get some different experiences, but it's really being able to share that information that not only that, you know, we haven't touched upon this, but it's been an amazing adventure to think that for the whole year, while Candace has been in Austria, some real important on the ground analysis that talks about COVID and black owned businesses struggling and, and also their recovery, that this can be done virtually. So I think we have to start thinking about, you know, especially for the, 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 um, the academic planner, what's planning now? How do we do community engagement now? And I think that that NOLA BA can really be at the forefront of looking and have already different ways of integrating students in person, virtually using different types of technology. Well, Dr. Thompson, you could not have given me a better setup for our next portion of this, which is my opportunity to introduce Norman Barnum, Interim President and CEO of the New Orleans Business Alliance. Welcome, Norman. We'd love to get your thoughts on not only the importance of internships from a business perspective, but from an economic, economic development perspective, and sort of what you foresee as the future evolution of internships. Hey, thank you, Ken. Thank you, everybody. First, let's start this. Thank you, Candace, for your tremendous time and effort during uh, our virtual tour together. The work product has been outstanding. Dr. Thompson, I'm very happy uh, with the relationship. And I do think as I had an opportunity to listen through everybody's thoughts in the conversation, as we start dealing with uh, the internship as the gateway into a talent solution, a portal into our our ecosystem, if you will. And I think that for me has been one of the broader aspects of not just the time on task within NOLA BA, but the potential for the whole market when we have talent that's being groomed here, that has a greater understanding of not just economic development, but all of our work streams, not just the stream that they work in. And then that gives them a broader context to be a value proposition in the community. So for me, uh, as it relates to the uh, intersection of inter uh, internship 
and economic development. It is the workforce solution. It is the talent solution. It is the engagement with the community and creating a vibrant, effective community member with the auspices of work. And so um, I think this particular internship in the virtual format even opened my eyes to greater possibilities on how we engage each other and how we engage not just Orleans Parish, but worldwide, our value proposition, proposition of culture, equity, and prosperity. So um, this particular tour uh, and my time at NOLA BA have had finance interns. I've watched interns that work in various aspects of our organization, as Ken and we stated. I've had interns that have come back, Ken mentored one that come back as an assistant vice president here. And what it really did for me is I really like to express to the interns that I interview that work under me uh, directly, I want them to feel the work, not just do the work. And I think that has been a great thing. And I think Candace will tell you, Candace Resilient Corridor, we felt the work. It was real work. The data analysis, the ability to give my staff depth and redundancy. These are all the things of the beginning portion of how we build out our talent pool at Nova BA, but also give experience Sometime for the intern, it's the first time my regular employee is managing. So it's managerial experience in that regard. It gives the intern a ability to see, as Candace said, exactly what I like about this particular work and then focus on my efforts. But it also gave me in the C-suite, it gave us a longer lens on what a vibrant economic development workforce could be and integrating internships as part of our initial first phase of entry-level jobs and then a career pathing that's tied to that. So from my perspective, uh, this internship, the virtual internship has been trend-setting. It has definitely given me some uh, opportunity to look and see how we can explore that uh, methodology, but it has been creating the impetus for us to now have paid internship to engage uh, the HBCU uh, universities in addition to UNO, Loyola, and Tulane, and to broaden out the talent workforce solution that integrates into our 504 with programming here at NOLA BA, and would take a warm handoff of these interns right into our workplace and our, and our, and our economy and our culture. So from uh, my perspective as the interim president and CEO, uh, Internships are here to stay. Internships will be a part of our, uh, our talent solution internally. And internships are actually a great gateway into, as Dr. Michelle Thompson said, work experience, life experience, and then the ability to be in a team or a group format that really creates a end product that we all can be proud of. And so thank you, Candace. Thank you, team members. Thank you, Chandra for mentoring, because that mentoring aspect, that is the secret sauce. That is where you really start to understand what it means not just to understand the transactional discipline that I'm learning in school, but how can I make this a transformational event for the community? How do we engage each other? How do these tasks, these day-to-day -day tasks equal the greater good? And so for that, uh, that's the importance in internships from my perspective. Fantastic. And Norman, as we, we talk about business now being global, and so it is with internships. They're, mm -hmm. they're global, they're virtual, and they're here to stay. Yes. So thank you, Norman. And thank you for all of you for participating in today's conversation. Uh, Dr. Thompson, would you like to say a few words to help close us out today? Well, I'm just excited that we've had a chance to talk about the importance of internships. And that to me is really just talking about how can we better be a better community. So whether we're in academia, uh, neighborhood, business, we're all truly in this together. And I think that what Norman just said about it being a warm handoff versus a cold shoulder, especially when it comes to um, interns and folks who felt like they had not been a part of. I think this has really opened up an opportunity and I'm excited to have been a part of this. 
Well, thank you. And thank you, Chandra and Candace and Norman. For those of you who are out there who are considering um, a future internship, you can check out the New Orleans Business Alliance on your university's handshake page. Also, you can check out New Orleans Business Alliance, our web page, on our careers page. We list all of our internship opportunities. But some of the best ways you can learn about what it's like to do an internship here is to chat with a former intern. Some of the best new interns we've gotten have been through referrals from the ones who have, have just re recently wrapped up with us. So if you ever have questions, please reach out to your counterparts at the university or directly to us at the uh, New Orleans Business Alliance. But um, we're looking forward to engaging with many, many more bright and talented students in our future internships. We thank you all so much for joining us today and have a great day. Thank you.